Hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, along with my wonderful wife, Janet, and we are streaming live from the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Podcast Studio. And we are super excited to have a Limitless Lindy on our podcast. She has a weight loss journey where she's lost nearly 500 pounds, I believe. She'll give us uh, more details about that. Um, and she's done it by going carnivore. Um, she's tried everything over the last 25, 30 plus years um, during her weight loss journey, even lap band and how the lap band failed. She will be discussing that, um, the details of that also. So without further ado, Lindy, welcome to our show. Good morning. How are you from Australia? <laughs> yeah, as far, I, I love our Australian guests. That's one of the reasons why we're streaming. We usually stream at 1230 and I think it's like 730 your time there. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. 730 a.m. So yeah. nice and bright. It's going to be a nice right. day too today. Right. <laughs> it's 730 a.m. on Tuesday, right? So you're a day ahead of us actually. That's and right. Yeah. Yeah, and I know we normally stream at 12.30, and 5.30 is a lot earlier than 7.30, so I appreciate you for being up at 7.30 to, to uh, be one of our international guests. So thank you so much, Lindy. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and go go ahead and just tell you your, tell us your story. I, I, I introduced you a little bit, but tell us about your weight loss journey. Oh, gosh, like where do I start? I've been overweight all my life. Um, I come from a, an Italian background. My, my mum's side's Italian. My father's side's English. The whole family was overweight. So it was just usual for us to have people come to the house and everyone was big and happy and celebrations. Um, food was very important part of our culture. So you'd sit down to a big smorgasbord of food and um, food was also used for comfort. Um, I had a lot of issues with my father, didn't really get along with him. And my great grandmother, she would sneak us into her bedroom and she's like, here's a chocolate, you know, from a secret stash in her wardrobe. That was sort of a, you know, her way of giving love. Yeah, they grew up in the war, so um, they were very dis disadvantaged, didn't have a lot, moved to Australia, that lucky country, everything's in abundance. So it's like, you know, just here's a chocolate, just all given with love, not knowing that they were sort of instilling some um, comfort eating bad habits, I guess, which I kind of grew up with. Um through school, it was difficult. I was bullied a little bit because I was always the largest one, very low self-esteem, very bad, you know, low confidence. I'd sit in the back of the class and hide whenever the teachers, you know, was asking for, you know, people to raise their hand or whatever. I'd be hiding because I just didn't want to be pulled out or to be part of, um, you know, stand out in the crowd kind of thing. So I was always trying to hide from everybody. And, um, geez, fast forward to about 21, I had to have my gallbladder out. Um, it's something that my mum and my grandmother as well had to have out when they got to around their early 20s. And my eldest daughter, she currently has just turned 21 and is suffering from gallbladder issues. So she's on her way to probably have to have that corrected as well. And, um, by 24, 25, I was around 300 pounds and um, tried so many diets. You know, I don't know if you have um, you got Weight Watchers, Gloria Marshall, Jenny Craig. We had different shakes, um, cabbage diet, all these weird, weird things. I tried everything and nothing worked. I'd be okay for a couple of days but just kept falling off the wagon and um, went to the doctor's. Can I have some help? I need to lose some weight. And there he said, lap band surgery. This will fix you. This is this is the cure. All right, sign me up. So I had to do the OptiFast shakes, which uh, to prepare for surgery. I had to lose about, um, I'm not sure in pounds, it was about 10 kilos in order to shrink my liver so they could actually perform the surgery. I was really great with that and um, I had to have like three shakes a day and had the surgery. After that, I couldn't eat anything, not even drink a sip of water. Everything would just come up. It was terrible. And um, I struggled with the eating. There was no sort of follow-up or anything, no um, 
So just sort of go in. I lost a little bit of weight, but I think I lost more on the OptiFast shakes than I actually did with the surgery. The I would just sort of suck on a bit of ice cream or a little chocolate block and just suck that. And that's how I sort of live for a cup quite a few um, months and then on to a years, I just sort of eventually I, I was able to stretch my pouch enough that I could get some food into me. But still, it didn't fix the root cause of my problem. You know, things happen and, you know, life happens and comfort eating was my thing. So, you know, I know if they say fruit and veg, eat a balanced diet, but I was, I was always craving the carbs, always cra- craving the sugars and, I had the rest, the restriction and it didn't fix me because obviously it didn't fix that root cause and those cravings. So it, over time, I continued to to diet um, all the diets again. I think I, by then I did the snake juice diet. I did the um, Biggest Loser diet, and I think it was a Chris Powell, and he had a big diet thing. That was a big thing. Uh, Michelle Bridges more diets failed all of those still had the restriction that was failing me because I was still not eating um I was still just craving all the time I went through when I was 30 my mother was diagnosed with cancer and my eldest daughter at the time uh she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes she was 10 10 years old at the time within days of each other. So the next seven years of my life, I was focused on caring for my mum and my daughter. So we were like hospital visits, um, doctor's appointments. My daughter then developed a severe depression with her type 1 diabetes. Her hormones were all over the place. Um, So my mum, who was fighting to live, my daughter, who was trying to commit suicide every every second day, it was... So my life was focused on them and my self-care just went out the window. It was like all I did, I was like a robot every day and I worked a full-time job from home and doing that as well. So that was my seven years until my mum passed away. Everything was just focused on their health and in and out of hospital visits and surgeries and whatnot. I lost mum. My daughter suddenly snapped out of her depression and she was sort of okay again and then by then she decided um, to move out of home and everything was okay. But I had been caring for these my loved ones in that capacity and my other daughter and husband, I mean, they were happy and content and they didn't need any caring and I, I was I was lost. I was like, what? where's Lindy? Who is Lindy? What do I do now? These people don't need me anymore because they're not here. My other husband and my other daughter, they were happy and I just felt lost. And I guess that just started eating, just trying to fill this big hole that was left by my mum and my my daughter. And um, I don't know, I still haven't figured out what had happened. It's like something in my head just, I just had to eat and just hide away from the world. So I continued to work from home full time and um, by my 50th birthday I'd reached around 800 pounds. Um, 800 pounds? Yeah, yeah, very close to. I can't confirm. My scales go up to 700 pounds um, and about six years prior to that I had gone to the doctors and I weighed in at... um, I think it was around 750 kilo of 750 pounds, um, which is about, yeah, three, 350 kilos. Um, sorry, my, it's hard to do the conversions. Yeah, 350 kilos would be about 800 pounds yeah. if I do it roughly yeah. in my head. Yeah. Times yes. it by 2.2. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know officially what my weight was because obviously we went through COVID, we didn't have food, we Ubered everything. Um, so I was definitely plus or minus 800 pounds. And I was immobile. Like I, yeah, 10 years prior, I'd actually I'd written off my car, so I hadn't been driving. I was stuck in the house. I work from home. I could literally walk from the bedroom in, this is my office, I'd walk in here, sit here all day and just email. My job is predominantly email-based. My client was in um, America and I deal with um, people all over the world. It's all 
email base so we'd have little zoom meetings and i stick a little post-it note on my camera so nobody could see me i just say my camera was broken and that's see here this sweet aussie chick they probably think i'm like a barbie or something like that they had no idea what was going on behind the screen i was this big 800 pound woman um very good at my job um but they had no idea i was very positive and whatever and then after like i'd fall asleep at my computer I'd have to go and sit down you know in between jobs because it was just so tiring I think I had sleep apnea type 2 diabetes um, mobility issues I struggled to walk up and down the hall as I said I was be out of breath my hip um, just my joint pain um, my hip I felt like my hip was going to come out of the socket I was a mess and I was pretty much on the verge of being bed bound. And I think the reason I, I was able to get to that weight and not be bed bound, like a lot of people get bed bound much earlier, is because I was overweight all my life from a young age. So my frame was built for it. And I get a lot of people saying, oh, you should have been bed bound, blah, blah, blah. But um, you, I think you're interviewing Todd. He's another larger person. And he also started off very young um being obese so we both have the frame to carry that but it was getting too much for even my body to to be able to to take that weight anymore so come my 50th birthday um my mum was diagnosed with cancer on her 50th birthday so when I turned 50 I thought oh, geez you know I remember how I felt when my mum uh, told me she had cancer and that fear that I had that I was going to lose my mum and um, I just instantly thought of my daughters they're going to be without a mum I had one foot in the grave they were watching me slowly kill myself what am I doing I need to make a change so it was it was very confronting and I just I had to do something my sister had been doing keto and she lost a lot of weight and said, why don't you give this a try? So she would. She gave me some videos to um, Dr. Ken Berry, binge-watched all his videos, thought, Do this guy, you know, this sounds really good, I'll give this a go. So here I went, started um, measuring all my macros, the proteins and the fats and all that stuff, and then delving into all the recipes, keto lasagna, keto cheesecake, still those comfort foods that I would fall on and I'm like if it's keto I could just have a double portion can't I like that's how my my mind worked you know I was just it was all about the comfort food and eating those nice yummy things and I would send her fit pictures photos of my food and you know so proud of myself because I made this this dish and it's all keto and she was like oh great job Lindy but still I couldn't do it because you know it was it was not fixing the problem. I was still turning to these keto treats and keto things as comfort. So I thought this isn't working. And then I saw Dr. Berry's videos on the carnivore diet. Now that is nuts. I thought this guy is really crazy. Just eat me. I'm going to get colon cancer. I'm going to get heart attack and all scurvy and all these things. I'm like, what the? But I was killing myself slowly. And I thought, well, I can either continue doing what I'm doing now and just die or do the carnivore diet. And it's terrible to say, but maybe it will just end my life a lot quicker and then my family won't have to put up with me. That's how I felt. I was wow. that desperate. So I thought, you know, maybe I just need to just end it all, do it quickly, and um, then my family can be in peace and not have to worry about me. So... I started carnival and I struggled for the sort of first six months because my family's not carnival, obviously. And my, my husband will be sitting there eating Chinese next to me while I've got my steak. Well, I loved my steak, but geez, that, that Chinese was not really good. And I was really struggling with that, um, just that the family dynamics. And they were very supportive of what I was doing, but they still wanted to have their their treats and things so I signed up with um, Steak and Butter Gang and reached out to coach Emily Harvo and coach Raymond and opted for some personal coaching 
And they, you know, that was the first time I actually sat in front of the computer and turned my camera on so they could see me. I had to be, you know, had to jump out of my comfort zone and actually reach out and and I cried and they cried. And we just sat there and talked about what was going on and how I was desperate and I really needed to change my life and I needed needed some help. So for eight months I coached through them and they helped me deal with things at home and coping with all of that, um, helping me with the carnival diet, just finding my feet with it all. And it was a game changer. That, that was the 3rd of January 2022. Um, that I started my first coaching session and that was the first day of my new life. So from 800 pounds, I'm down to 263 pounds as of today. So that's and 540 pounds, is that correct? I guess so. I'm not, not don't do the maths. <laughs> incredible. I'm just doing it. <laughs> yeah, awfully close. 537 pounds. <laughs> that's yeah. incredible. I, I mean, great job. Wow. Yeah. So I've still got a long way to go, but, you know, my focus is not on the weight loss anymore. The healing that I have experienced through the carnival diet, like the pain is gone. I'm mobile again. Um, I've got confidence. Here I am sharing my story with the world, like little meek little Lindy who was afraid of her own shadow is now on YouTube. Um, it's changed me in so many ways. And, um, I'm no longer pre-diabetic, sleep apnea gone. I just have migraines every other week, completely gone. The doctor, when I went to the, the doctor about my migraines, he's like, lose weight and go and have a massage. And here's a pill you can have, you need to take it every morning. That will stop the, the migraines. And I'm like, I'm not one to take pills. I never have been. I just like, I just don't like pills. And I said to him, I don't want a pill. I want to know why I'm getting the migraines. Yeah, just lose weight and go and have a massage. You'll be fine. That was his. So carnival's fixed it. I haven't had one migraine since I've been carnival. And I was getting them every other week. So, wow. so yeah. how many, were you on any blood pressure medications, high blood pressure medications? I never went to the doctor. So no, I just, if I was sick, if I was unwell, I just put up with it. I didn't want to. Firstly, I couldn't drive anywhere. I yeah, couldn't even true. fit behind. I couldn't fit behind the wheel of a car anyway. I know my husband had a bit of a medical um, episode one night, and I couldn't take him to hospital because I couldn't fit. So we had to call the ambulance, um, and because it was during COVID, three hours later, still no ambulance. They ended up call, sending a taxi to pick him up, and my my daughter was actually in Sydney at the time, and. Um, the car in the driveway and I couldn't drive him. It's like wow. I was useless, absolutely must useless. Have felt helpless. Uh, I felt terrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. Um yeah. It, it, it's an awful thing. And you know, failing all these diets, failing like burn surgery, I failed my family, you know, and they were so supportive through all of this. I mean, I just didn't want to be part of life anymore. I just didn't want to be a disappointment to anyone. Um, so it really is a, a downward spiral, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. Um, I still, I'm not depressed anymore. I'm very happy with where I'm going, but I still have a bit of anxiety. You know, when you go go out, I, I look at the chairs. Is it going to hold me? You know, am I going to fit in that booth at a restaurant or um, can I climb the stairs or there's still all those big, the big person's um, sort of thoughts and mentality there and I'm just still trying to break those because I have lost weight very quickly. I mean, it's been two, two years, nearly four months I've dropped all that weight and um, my mind hasn't caught up with it yet. So, Yeah, I mean, that's lit you've literally lost 250 pounds a year. I mean, you know, when you, when you do the math there, that's 250 divided by, uh, that's like 20 pounds a month. Yeah. Or two, two for, you know, for 28 months. I mean, great job. Janet, what questions do you have for Lindy? Well, 
I guess this kind of comes back to the root cause and you kind of went over that, but I think that's one thing that is lost a lot of times is people just say, just lose weight, but sometimes it's an addiction issue or a comfort issue as in it's filling the whole of what needs to be dealt with. And -hmm. you learn that at a very early age. And I think that's probably true of a lot of people. It's, um, that we celebrate something, but maybe we should have celebrated it differently. Um, but you didn't learn that. So it's hard to break those habits. So um, what kind of tools did they they share with you on, on how to have that? Because, you know, you're sitting beside your husband and he's, you know, the smells there, the thoughts are there. Yeah. What, what kind of things worked for you to say no? Well, the biggest thing is I had to realise that I'm, a, I'm doing this for a reason. This is my journey and I can't expect people around me to do exactly what I'm doing. Um, and that was just, I guess, uh, the light bulb moment that I was missing. You know, he can eat his Chinese and I should be, you know, if I eat Chinese, I know what happens to me and I can't stop. I just want to keep going or um, it's not going to be good for me. I mean, I can just look at food and I'm putting on weight I don't need much whereas you know the rest of the family can eat this stuff and they're they're not putting on the weight so for me things are differently and different and uh, that's what I had to understand is we're all unique and we need to find what works for us and um, so the big thing was knowing this is my journey why am I why am I doing this diet why am I doing carnival and hold on to that um, so that was a big thing there. That's really important. You took ownership mm-hmm. of yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, so w- with carnivore, you don't track macros, you don't track calories. Kind of tell us what your day-to-day life of eating looks like. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of people, some people do track macros and other people fast and there's so many ways of doing carnivore. But um you have to find what works for you. And I was like, I'd cry after my coaching sessions because I'd be saying, tell me how many grams of protein, how many grams of fat. I need the exact amount so I can weigh everything out. And they're just like, no, just eat till you're satisfied and then stop. And then don't eat again until you're hungry. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. And that would freak me out. I'm like, no, I need calories. I need this, you know, because that's that's how we're raised, you know. Yeah. If you yeah. track your calories and, you know, small portions and, you know, how, how much meat, you know, tell me on the palm of my hand, how, yeah. how much meat should I have? And they're just like, stop, stop, stop. Um, and the first few months I did cry nearly after every session because they wouldn't give me that information. And then I just thought, bugger it. I need to let this go. Just trust the process. Trust what my coaches are saying. And it's like the stress, the mountain was lifted from my shoulder. I could actually sit down and then start to enjoy my food. And it's amazing how your body just says, okay, you've had enough now, you know, and I never had that before. (laughs) Yeah. I I believe one of the easiest diets to follow is carnivore diet. Because if you really stick to strict carnivore diet, you, it, it just works. You don't have to you don't have to do macros. You don't have to count calories. And I want to comment on what you're talking about with keto. One of the things I don't just like you were saying. One of the things I don't like about keto is you'll see these people that you know they're posting that they're keto and they're posting. Well, look at the keto cookies I made. That doesn't make sense to me. Keto cookies, no. keto ice cream. Seriously, and I'm not saying that necessarily cookies and ice cream are always bad. But for somebody that's wanting to really lose weight and in, and, and in a in a big health issue like you were, those keto those keto treats are not good. And, and I can just say, for most people, they're not good. I mean, that's what I like about carnivores. It's real food. If you've got to make keto cookies and keto treats, they're not real food necessarily, and I, yeah. I don't think they're necessarily good for you. And here's the thing. I have seen keto people eat a bag of pork rinds because they're keto friendly. I yeah. just don't think that's really good. Or, you know, adding a, adding a, adding a table, not a tablespoon, but like a half stick of butter to your food so you can be keto. That doesn't make sense either, honestly. Um, but the carnivore thing, and here's the thing about carnivore. 
it's especially red meat. There is hardly anybody that's allergic to red meat. And if they are, there's a bigger issue going on. It's very, very, very rare. So, and there's a lot of vegetables and fruits that people can't tolerate. Um, but almost everybody can tolerate red meat. Um, so go carnivore and many things can go away. Even if you're not trying to lose weight, but if you have arthritis or you have some kind of inflammatory disease or you have some kind of bowel problem, go carnivore. You don't need some fancy drug. Believe me, if you've got some kind of bowel problem, you don't need some fancy drug, go carnivore. What are your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just have to look at all the you know, YouTube videos. You've got Dr. Chafee, Dr. Berry, Dr. Baker, and just read through all the comments. People are healing things and could be any condition, depression, cancer. I mean, yeah. there's so many positive stories. Read those. And we always get thrown at us. You know, there's no scientific evidence to back it up. All the, I, we know that. But look at the testimonies, you know. Right. These people are healing themselves. I've lost, what, 540 pounds, he just said. Right. Um, and for somebody who thought I was broken, like I couldn't, I failed everything, I've lost 440 pounds um, because I now have an off switch that I never knew existed. Um, that is amazing. So, and I still get people now saying, oh, you're not going to be here t- in two, two or three years. I'd love to see you, um, you know, you're going you're to be dead. Like we had, did a live stream the other day and we had these two, a fruit, fruit, fruit of port, Mavorian or something like that person and some nurse saying that we're going to be dead in a couple of years. I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't have done carnival. Uh, uh, right. I, I mean, and, and that's what I got to tell them. Let's just say... Let's just say carnivore is unhealthy. I don't believe it is. I'll go into that. But is eight hundred is being eight hundred pounds healthy? I mean, seriously. No, I mean, oh, and, it and obviously the lap band didn't work. But we're told that's healthy. And and one of the diets that Jan and I will one of the weight loss interventions that Jan and I will never recommend now is any kind of bariatric surgery, lap bands, you know, gastric bypass. We will not recommend those because they don't fix the problem. And so many people gain the weight back. And if you Outside of the lap band, that can be removed. Did you have yours removed? No, I still have mine. It's okay. been in for 27 years, and I'm worried that there's scar tissue around it, and if they try yeah. and remove it, they're going to nick something and cause me even more damage. Because right. it does affect me now. It does. I can't sit down and eat a whole steak. It takes me two to three hours to eat a steak, and I have to take little bites. I I'm like a baby. I chop my food up into little pieces, yeah. and um, it's terrible. And yeah. I'm going to Texas shortly, you know, steaks. They're talking about buying tomahawk steaks and dino. <laughs> yeah, in Austin, that's the best place. Right? <laughs> Although I'm Australia like, is a, Australia yeah. is a good place for steak too. Yeah, but I'm going to be sitting there watching everybody eat. Uh, and well, my yeah. daughter's coming. I'm like, you can order food and I'm just going to be eating like a little bird off her plate. Just right. having. It's all right. And, of course, <laughs> Sean Baker will be eating his three pounds of steak. <laughs> Yeah, um, I have three carnivores yeah. at my house, so I get yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, our, our, uh, our sons, we are, our sons are about as big as Sean Baker, and they can eat steak. Um, yeah. Well, at least you didn't have the gastric bypass, because the gastric bypass, then you have nutrient absorption mm-hmm. problems and all kinds of things. So, And that's not reversible. So, um, yeah. And here's the one thing I want to say about, and, and Sean Baker's mentioned this. And, and, you know, Sean Baker is, one thing I like about Sean Baker, and we've interviewed him twice in our podcast, is that he's super honest about when somebody says, well, where are the studies to show that it increases longevity or whatever? And he's just super honest. We don't have them. But like you say, there's tons of testimonies how people heal their, their diseases. Yes. But every once in a while, he'll make a comment like this. Um, well, you know, where are the studies? And he'll say, oh, I don't know, 2,000 years of evolution that we've been eating red meat? I mean, think about yeah. it. If red meat was bad for humans we would have died long ago because just a hundred years ago, it was our main staple of calories in our bodies on almost every culture, you know? Um, so how can it be bad for us? You know, mm. I mean, seriously. And then you look at how it was vilified and you got to wonder if it was vilified because big food makes money off all the other stuff, mm. you know? Um, and if you think about what big food and big pharma has done and they want us on drugs, you know, you think about yourself and, 
you know, you wouldn't even go to the doctor, but somebody typically of, you know, 800 pounds, they're going to be on 10 or 20 different medications. Oh, not more than that. I, you know, I, it brings back, I had a uh, patient that died at 50 um, from mm -hmm. food and yeah. the amount of meds that she was on, I couldn't imagine. I don't, I, I just can't imagine. It was a sack full. And, you know, the sad thing is nobody ever once helped solve a problem. So, to me, the fact that you have learned when you're full, because your body is telling you that you're full, gives you power. I mean, it's restored your own strength to be able to say, I'm, I'm full, I'm done. And medication can't do that. Um, yeah, you might feel nauseated and don't feel good from it. But, you know, what I'm taking from this, from our conversation is this has given you confidence embolden you to be who you want to be or need to be in a different way and you're not you're not tied to a medication yeah you know big pharma's not ruling you for the rest of your life you're in charge yeah i'm kind of glad that um as in picking all that sort of came out after <laughs> carnival and that i found carnival first because i as i said i was never one to take medication i just I've never really believed in it. I've watched my parents because um, my father had cancer as well. My, my grandfather had Alzheimer's. My grandmother was also very, very sick. And they were like a pharmacy. They had their boxes of pills. My mm -hmm. great-grandmother as well. And they'd sit there and, you know, two of these, three of that. And they were constantly on medications. And I guess that's where my hatred for it because I just didn't see it fix anything. They still suffered. Um, and I didn't want to be like that. I was suffering as I was going, but I guess I just wanted to end it all. And um, I just didn't didn't want that. So yeah, Ozempic now as well. I, I am very against it. I don't think just if you can afford it, go and buy the meat. You know, you're happy to spend spend all that money on a on a tablet or like on an injection, but just go and buy some meat. And this is working. This is giving me that off switch. It's it's. You know, and there's no complications from this. I mean, I am fit. I am actually looking better, and I am lighter than I was in my twenties, right now. Wow. Um, and I go out with my daughters, and everyone's like, "Are you guys sisters?" And I'm like, no, I'm not. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. I love it. So, love yeah, it. Now, so. are you still losing weight, or are you tracking your weight? Does that matter? Um, tell us about that. I am still losing weight and I just go through like stalls every now and then because I, I under eat a lot because of my restriction. So yeah, we've, um, I learned how to do priming as part of the steak and butter gang where, where um, you eat three meals a day and because of my situation, I have to graze all day. So a couple right. of bites all throughout the day and that's my priming. That'll just ramp up my metabolism again because when you under eat, everything slows down. Mm -hmm. So I know what to look for. I know how to fix it now. Um, so I'm currently in a stall at the moment, so I'm in the, in the process of priming and that weight will start to fall down again soon. But I'm not in a hurry. Like, I've got my life back. I've bought a brand new car with the money that I've saved. Oh, that is for you. Yeah. How cool so, is that? Yeah, so I'm, at, I'm mobile again. I go out and um, visit my daughter and go shopping now. And, um, mm. yeah, I've just got my life back. So yeah. it's all about the healing. Uh, my hip, mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, I felt like it was going to pop out of its socket. It's almost pain-free now. Occasionally That's I'll take amazing. a little step and I get a click. But um, I think I thought I was going to have to have hip replacement surgery. I don't think that's an issue now. And I think if I continue to lose weight and I've started rebounding now, I've got a treadmill and I do a little bit of exercise here and there um, because I'm not in pain mm. now and because I want to, I just feel like it. And I think I'll eventually be able to strengthen it enough that I will like it'll be non-existent, that pain. I truly mm. believe it. With the healing and the movement that I'm doing now, um, yeah, there's no rush. I'm healing and um, I've got my life back. So yeah. I've got and a positive I, I, future. I, I, I believe that you'll be pain-free. I believe <laughs> that all, all the things you just said, I believe it. And yeah. you're right. And here's one of the things you talked about, Ozempic, and 
you know, we're, we're both pharmacists and we get a lot of questions about Ozempic. And I will say that I think short term, it's, it's better than, than not losing weight. But again, long term, you have to change your diet. You have to change your lifestyle and your diet. So, um, you know, and doing what you're doing comes without side effects and without the expense. Um, yes. I mean, mm-hmm. some people would argue that eating carnivore is expensive, but mm-hmm. my guess is, Lindy, you're saving a lot more money eating carnivore now than when you are yeah. or all the junk before, right? Oh, absolutely. And at 800 pounds, I think I, I was one of the mal- most malnourished people in the world because you yeah. are what you eat, and I was not right. eating good stuff. I am now eating a, the proper human diet is what I call it, thanks uh, to Dr. Berry. Um, just the meat, I, my body is now nourished. My cravings have turned off. So I don't. I eat one, sometimes two meals, you know, just a little bit of grazing. And honestly, it's really cheap to eat because yeah. um, I'm, not, I'm not eating, you know, five different food groups and all this stuff on my plate and I have to have my snacks and three meals a day and dessert. And <laughs> there's none of that. I don't want it anymore. Right. And you could sit. I could sit down in front of a, a packet of biscuits. I don't need them. I'm quite right. happy for other people to to eat them. And I just look at them and I think, oh no, that that one biscuit is going to throw me into a spin, and I'll be back at 800 pounds just like that. And so that why do it doesn't tempt yeah. me at all. And I love that food freedom that I just didn't have before. That's mm. awesome. So Julie, go ahead and stream her. Um, that link there that we got that and um, pull that link up and Lindy, I think this is your Facebook group. You have a private uh, Facebook group for women. Tell us about this. Yes. This is the lovely coach, Emily. She's the one that helped me get to where I am today. And we just decided to, to start a little community. So it's a private face group just for women for support, uh, motivation, inspiration. Um, we've got nearly, I think nearly 900 members. We've only been at, open for like two or three weeks now oh, that is awesome wow <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, we're doing so well and the community is just amazing the most beautiful beautiful women in the group we have all ages and sizes and different conditions and everyone is just there cheerleading and motivating each other on um yeah, just, just a bit of support, you know. A lot of us don't have people in our lives that are carnival. My husband, he's a dirty carnival. Uh, my daughters are not carnival. My friends, none of them are carnival. So you do feel a bit alone in your journey and you still have people like, you're going to have a heart attack and this. And so just to come into a place and have a safe place where you can, you know, not be judged. If you're struggling, put your struggles in there. It's 50 people that are having that same struggle and we've got a little community and you're there to cheer each other on and support each other, give each other tips. And, um, yeah, it's just I think support has been a big part of my journey and why I've remained successful. I've thrown myself into YouTube videos. I watch all the doctors, all the new people that start in channels now i follow all their stories i love it i love hearing of their successes and when they're struggling on there like you can do this you can do this i mean the comments like um it's just such a beautiful little community i'm just so in love with um, the carnival community i just feel like we're one big family and we all are striving for their optimal health you know and to find to be limitless that's right. What can I say? And, yeah. and speaking of YouTube and Limitless, don't you have a YouTube channel? Let's go ahead and stream that, Julie. <laughs> yeah, Limitless Lindy. And I have to thank Bella from Ste- the Steak and Butter Girl. Uh, she's the one that coined me this little name. And I just thought, yeah, that's me. I want to be Limitless. I want to climb mountains. I want to get my life back. And I have, thanks to Carnival, been given a second chance at life. So um, this is my channel. Um, yeah, there's me. My daughter pranked me and my husband. We were sleeping on the couch. I passed out. <laughs> my, my computer. I, children, yeah. awesome. <laughs> I was working at the computer on the belly and I just passed out. And um, hmm. yeah, in my dressing gown, I never got dressed because I couldn't fit into shoes and I just lived in my dressing gown. It was an awful photo. When I went to my phone, I'm like, oh my God. And somehow, I'm hopeless with phones. I somehow managed to snap the shot. Like, 
and it's saved to my photos and I didn't even know and because I don't have many photos of me at that size everything got ripped up or deleted <laughs> and then when I was going through the phones trying to look for photos of me I saw that and geez did I laugh but now I wish I did have all those photos of me back at that size because you know that was me and I am proud of how far I have come. Like, yeah. I never, ever thought I would lose weight. I thought that was me forever. And it was like literally week, two or three weeks before I started Carnival, my daughters helped me clean out my wardrobe. I had all of my mum's clothes and she'd passed away like 12 years ago, something like that. And um, I still had all her stuff and I'm like, I need to clean because I was, I was literally preparing myself. I didn't want my girls to have to deal with that. I didn't tell them that. I was yeah, like, I need wow. to clean out my wardrobe. And I saw all these skinny clothes of my journey and I'm like, I'm never going to fit into those. And we put them all in a bag and we donated everything. And then I started Carnival and now I'm like, damn it, I wish I had those clothes. <laughs> now you get to buy new ones. Exactly. Lady. That's the good news. You save so much money, you can buy a lot of new clothes there you go. now. Yeah. And be careful how many you, can... you buy because you're still on a journey and you're going right. to need even skinnier That's clothes. That's right. So. And yeah. you need to go out and buy them, right? Yeah, you don't have exactly. to order them in. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. Lindsay, Lindy, as we, as we wind this podcast up, what do you have a passion for? Oh, I just want to share this message. I want to reach mm-hmm. other six, seven, eight hundred pounders and show them that this can be done. There's, mm-hmm. There is an out and whether it be keto or carnival, you can do this. And um, Todd, Michael and myself, we he's another there, 700 plus planders. We've actually got a, a, a YouTube group. Um Oh, on our channels, we, we do a, a weekly live and we just talk about life at 700 plus pounds and just trying to share the message, you know, that you can do this. And we, we had a fantastic interview with a lady yesterday, Dr. Leslin Keith, who uh, specialises in lymphedema and lipedema, which is something we, the three of us personally struggle with. Absolutely, yeah. Best interview ever. We need to get these messages out there. Carnivore is the way to fix it. Um our symptoms have improved and that. So we just want to just spread the news, share the message that if you've tried all the diets, if you've tried the weight loss surgery, have you tried carnival? This is an option or, or keto. I mean, I don't care what people do. We're all here to be optimal in our health. And if you're a vegan and you've been your fantastic, then good luck to you. You know, I don't care. Yep. But for me, it doesn't work. You know, yeah. this is what I need. So leave me alone. Yeah. You do yeah. you. I'll do me. Um, and everyone's happy, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I guess that's my message. I'm not saying everyone needs to be carnival, but for me personally and a lot of people that have tried everything else, this is an option. So, yeah. Well, well said. I, yeah. <laughs> and I, I will tell you, um, you know, you've definitely, uh, you're such an inspiration and you've definitely helped us realize our goal of this podcast, which is ed- to educate and empower individuals to take charge of their own health. So thank you so much for being on our podcast today to help us realize that goal, Lindy. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. And thank you, listeners and viewers, for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Tune in later. Stay um, up to date on our uh, streaming platforms, which is Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, and LinkedIn. Stay up to date on all those platforms. Share it, comment, please. Um, and stay tuned for when our midweek podcast is. I'm not sure exactly when it is this week, but stay tuned to those platforms, and you will know more who our upcoming guest is. So thank you for listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you.